obfuscation and deobfuscation. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a practical hands-on exercise that is part of TriHackMe's Advent of Cyber Day 18. So let's set the mood right and let's get started. Wearable has not been the same ever since the wormhole appeared. The systems are going haywire, shock alerts triggered, etc. But amidst all of this chaos, Mexkiri noticed that there was an email that came from North Pole HR. Now, the funny thing about this is that there isn't any North Pole HR and they've only got a South Pole HR department. So Mexkiri knows that someone has sent this fake email. And upon doing some further digging, what Mexkiri noticed is that a PowerShell script as part of this email has been downloaded. Now, Mexkiri also knows this, that malicious actors often hide code and data using a technique called as obfuscation. Now, what exactly is obfuscation? What are the encryption and encoding standards you use to obfuscate anything? And at the same time, how do you de-obfuscate something that's already been obfuscated? Before we look at any of that, let's dive straight in and start our virtual machine. In order to do that, you come to your main room page. And when you're there, you can read the entire storyline as well to familiarize yourself. And under task one, which is the introduction, there's an option to start your virtual machine, which says set up your virtual environment. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here and click start machine. And while that's loading, should just take a couple of minutes. So once your machine is provisioned, you'll see your target machine status to be on on your homepage right here. And you also get a username, password, IP address and RDP credentials, basically. But what we're going to be doing is we'll just use the split screen setup for this task. So once you're done and your machine is up, all we're going to do is for answer the questions below, we'll just click on check. And because the machine is already up and running, it says correct answer. And we can now move on to the next step of this practical exercise. Heading straight into task two, we'll just sort of expand that right here. And it starts off with a little bit of theory first to help us understand what is obfuscation and what is deobfuscation. Obfuscation is the practice of making data hard to read and attackers use it to evade basic detection and also cause delays in investigations. Let's say, for example, you've got a security tool that automatically detects a string which says hacked or some sort of string which you've set it up to detect the pattern and then block it. But what attackers can do is they can completely transform that string using obfuscation techniques so that your security tools cannot pick that up. And there are many techniques to do this. As you can see on the screen right now, ROT1 is one technique where you sort of shift the alphabet by one space. So for example, car, which is C-A-R, then becomes D-B-S. So they use this method to then obfuscate longer words as well. Similarly, other than this, you've also got ROT 13, wherein you shifted by 13 spaces instead of one space. But in the real world, wider range of obfuscation techniques are used. For example, XOR. In this method, each character is represented as a byte, and each byte is then combined with a key using the XOR mathematical operation. And as a result of this, you get perfectly understandable text now transformed into something with symbols, letters, numbers that you absolutely have zero clue about. Look, obfuscation with this XOR technique cannot be done manually. And as a result of this, we've got tools. For example, CyberChef is one which can be used to perform these type of operations. So let's quickly go and see what CyberChef is and how it is used. So under the task instructions itself, there's a link which takes you to CyberChef. And what we're going to be doing is they've given us a sort of string, which is carrot supremacy. And they've also provided us with some instructions to obfuscate this specific string using XOR. So we'll just go to CyberChef. We we'll paste our input string here in the input. And what we're going to do is under the operations tab on the left hand side, we'll just search for XOR. We drag this and drop this under our recipe section right here. Now for XOR, you need to have a key that is going to be used to obfuscate this text. So going back to our instructions, it says that we set the key to A and make sure the key is set to hex. So we'll just set this to A and we'll leave this as hex. There are a lot of options, which is decimal, binary, base64, etc. We'll just follow the instructions and leave it as hex. And the moment you do that, you can see your caret supremacy in the output section at the bottom right 
hand of the screen is sort of transformed into something that is completely gibberish and doesn't make sense to the basic human eyes. The good thing about obfuscation is, is that it's easy to sort of reverse engineer a pattern that's already obfuscated if you know what technique or method has been used to obfuscate it in the first place. One such example is by using patterns. For example, with ROT1, all you do is just look for the next character if it's shifted by one. And if you pull it back one character, does it make sense or not? With ROT13, look for common three letter words. For example, the, which is T-H-E, is transformed to G-U-R. So if you see that, you can sort of connect the dots and try and come down to what the deobfuscated string is. For example, if we go back to CyberChef, if we look at the operations and if we search base 64, we've got options which is to base 64 and from base 64. So if you drag and drop the from base 64, that is what you can use to sort of deobfuscate a pattern. It's perfectly normal that you're not able to sort of detect patterns and you're looking at something completely unfamiliar and not able to guess what exactly the method that's being used to obfuscate. Now, hackers are also pretty smart. And what they do is rather than just using plain obfuscation, they use a method called as layered obfuscation. In layered obfuscation, what happens is you can use one method to obfuscate, then you use another method to once again obfuscate that already sort of unfamiliar obfuscated pattern. And what this does is it makes it harder for a security tool or for yourself who's a defense security engineer to then deobfuscate and find exactly what was the pattern that was sent in the first place. However, let's jump into unwrapping this Easter egg. So they've given us instructions which states that there is a script which goes by the name of Santa Stealer. As you can see, it's on the desktop right here. And what we'll do is let's quickly open the script. So you just double click on it and it should open the script in an editor. And once that's open, we can then look at what the contents of the script are. Once you open the script, you can see line number nine says start here and part one obfuscation. So to do, which is step one, says deobfuscate the string present in the $C2B64 variable and place the URL in the $C2 variable. Then run the script to get the flag. So this is the $C2B64 variable and this is the obfuscated pattern, which what we're going to do is we're just going to copy it just like that. And we need to deobfuscate this and then paste that into the C2 variable, which is right here. So what we'll do is we'll go back to CyberChef and when we're in CyberChef, I'll paste the obfuscated pattern in the input section on the right hand side. And in the recipe section, I know that this is a base64 because that's what the um, variable also stands for, which is C2B64. So we'll say from base64 because now we want to deobfuscate it. The moment we drag that right here, you can see in the output section, we get a URL, which is HTTPS forward slash forward slash c2 dot north pole dot thm forward slash xfil. So we'll just copy this right here, go back to our virtual machine. And in the script, it says paste it under the dollar c2 variable. So we'll just get rid of this and let's replace it with the URL. Control S to save it. And in order to run this PowerShell script, you just go to the start option here and you type PowerShell and there should be an application which is Windows PowerShell, which we'll open up, which is right here. Once that's open, we'll CD to the desktop. So in order to do that, the command is CD desktop, hit enter. And once you're here, in order to run the script, it's just dot forward slash santa stealer dot ps1 so dot forward slash and you input the script name hit enter and the script should now run and as you can see it's doing a couple of checks downloading payload and uh, let's wait for this to execute completely and once it's executed we get a string right here which is thmc2 deobfuscation with a combination of numbers so let's just copy this and go back to our sort of instruction sheet. It says answer the questions below and right here we'll paste what we've copied and we'll just click on check and it says correct answer. So the first task is done correctly where we've successfully deobfuscated a base 64 pattern and we've gotten the flag for the first deliverable. Now let's head into finding the second flag. In order to do that, let's go back into our script 
and in our script there's a separate section now which is part two for obfuscation so let's quickly read through it it says obfuscate the api key using xor single byte key 0x37 and convert to hexadecimal then add the hex string to the dollar obf api eey variable then run the script again to receive flag number two from the validator so they've given us an api key which is this text right here which says candy cane api key and what we've got to do is we've got to obfuscate this once again on cyberchef what we get which is the obfuscated output we've got to paste it into this section here where it says hex underscore here so let's do that let's copy this and go to cyberchef so we'll paste this in the input let's remove the previous paste 64 out from the recipe section and let's go back to the instructions. It says we need to use the XOR operation using a single byte key and convert to hexadecimal. So let's go here in the operations tab. Let's search for XOR first. So let's drag and drop XOR. We'll give the key which was 0x37. That was set to hex. And you see it's given us an output which is again gibberish. But this is still not complete. If we go back to the instructions, it says we need to convert it to hexadecimal. So coming back to Cyberchef, we'll just search to hex right here in the operations tab, drag and drop that into our recipe section. And in the delimiter, I don't want spaces. So I'm just gonna set it to be none. And as you can see, once I do that, the spaces go away from the output section. And what I'll do is I'll just copy this, go back to our script and paste this in the section right here so let's replace that Control s again to save the script let's go back to our powershell window and let's run the script again and enter and let's wait okay so here we get another string now which is thm api obfuscation let's copy that come back to our instruction sheet paste that in the answer section here and go check and there you go it says correct answer so amazing now it says if you want to learn more about obfuscation check out the obfuscation principles room so if you want to have a look at that you can go and check that out as well but coming back to this specific task if we just go check now which is the last task it says correct answer and we did it obfuscation the eggshell file complete so there you go. This was a practical hands-on task with obfuscation and deobfuscation. We used Cyberchef to exactly see how you can obfuscate and at the same time decode already obfuscated patterns. We performed a practical hands-on exercise as part of TriHackMe's Advent of Cyber Day 18. If you've liked this video, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel. I make a lot of videos in the cybersecurity space. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.